Back row ministry, the world for men, Mr. Mark, coming at you live and direct. So, rewatch 1984. I watched this movie several, several times. So, this would be about the fifth time I watched it. When I first watched it, didn't really understand the concepts. Understood some of the concepts, but early on didn't understand the concept. So, for those that don't know, 1984 is a book written by George or George Orwell. I remember a couple of years ago, around the anniversary of 1984, um... The writing of the book. The book um, it was written in 1949, and then in 2019, that was the 50 year anniversary of the book when they talked in this great detail about the book. Pretty much that whole time in the media, they kept talking about and trying to uh, compare 2019 to 1984. So, remember, 19 is the chaos code. Number 19 is the chaos code. So that's why they kind of tied it in because the whole setting of 1984 is this chaotic civilization that we live in. Um, I remember the, the book was written right after World War II. We're going into the Cold War and we're going to tie that, that stuff into the, the theme of 1984 and kind of how this civilization looks. And pretty much how everything kind of flowed. So what Orwell was kind of writing was what was going to take place. He changed what was going to take place. But it really didn't change. And I'll explain that inside of this video. So early on, if we look at the number 1984. So um, remember, I've kind of taught you guys and girls how to look at numbers. And I'm still continuously learning. So it's, it's going to be a forever learning process. I'm going to start beefing up my my research by reading more intensely on some of the some of the um, some of the practices, especially Jamatra. I definitely want to get more in depth with it to have a, a better understanding. But you have to get a little deeper, so I'm going to have to do a lot more research. But let's take the numbers 1984. So if you take all those numbers and add them up, 1 plus 9 is 10, 10 plus 8 is 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. If you add 4, it gives you 22. And we know that 22 is a number of the master builder. So it's a master number. The society uses that number, and it's the number of the master builder. So you know right off the jump why Orwell chose 1984. So you got to remember these folks, they don't just choose something just to be doing it. He chose it because it matched up with a number that symbolized, symbolized and has great symbolization in the society, which is 22, the master builder. And of course, in 1984, this dystopian this society, they use the word dystopian society, is been, has been built and has continued to be created for the people of that time. So, you know, they continue to create the society for the people of that time. So I'm going to throw a couple of created words that they use. Make sure that. Of course, that didn't happen. Spelling is fundamentally. Spelling is fundamental. All right, so the key uh, antagonist in this is a creation called Big Brother. Creation called Big Brother. And funny with Big Brother, the minute you pick Big Brother in, the numbers you get. And the primary number you get for Big Brother is 59. You also get 67, so... Remember, 59 is the number of the Negro. 59 is the number of the Negro. 67 is 19, the 19 prime. So Big Brother is 19. So in the year of chaos, which was 2019, the 50th year of this movie, uh, you know, Big Brother vibrates with that. So it's very significant around that time period. 59, which our Negro number is also 17. 17 is the kill code. So Big Brother represents uh, killing, represents the killing. It can be 
killing of society, killing of ideas, uh, killing of people can be represented in various ways. So that's Big Brother. So Big Brother is our main um, antagonist in, in the film. Okay, so key numbers inside of 1984, things to look for. So Big Brother, like I said, is our first antagonist. Oceana. So Oceana is, is this created uh, civilization that the individuals inside of the film uh, live. So, you know, this place is, if you read the book, this is a society uh, that's in warfare constantly. War never stops. And you have three factions. You have a faction of East Asia, which is the Asiatic people. Uh, you have uh, 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 Euro, I want to say uh, Eurasia, which is a mixture of pretty much you can say the Russian part of Asia and parts of Europe. We would call that Prussia. Today we'll call it, and back then it was called Prussia. So. Prussia or Russia, pretty much in, in your age, it was supposed to represent Russia or the Prussians. So if you remember the split after World War II, pretty much Russia took over East, East, East Berlin and East Germany. That's nothing but Prussia. So if you read the Prussian history, you get a better breakdown of how Germany used to look at one point in time and how it became what it is. So it, Russia is an old... It's, very old in, 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 in history, but it's a funny history, so definitely do a breakdown of that. I'll do a breakdown one day on Russian history so people can kind of get an understanding of what was going on with the Germans. Remember, the Germans um, are a mixture of various tribes, and those tribes did break off at one point, but spanned a long way. Remember, they fought the Romans for the longest, for the, um, for the Prussians, or the Germans at the time. Or the Germanic tribes, let's call them what it is. So Oceania is this place that them and the Americas have created. The Americas have also are a part of this Oceania creation. Okay. So Oceania is 39. Remember, 39 is the New York number. 39 can also be 27. 39 can also be 12. Then we go back to the number of completion. So you always have to look at numbers in various ways. Also, 93. 93 represents time. Remember, Saturn is the keeper of, keeper of time. So you can also look at, look at it that way. So in number properties, when you take 39, you get nothing, and we'll take 93 on the flip side of that. I always put them in just in case. Get nothing, but we know that 93 represents um, Saturn. Saturn is, of course, the keeper of time, and that's one way of looking at it. Let me see if I can pull it up. This way. No, I can't. So, man, we talk about Saturn. So, Saturn would be represented in 93, 21, 69, and 42. Those are also numbers that represent Saturn. So anytime you see 21, that's also a representation of Saturn. And of course, if you see in our numbers that we have now, Oceana is 21. So that's that representation of Saturn. I mean, these folks love to praise Saturn for some reason. Oceana is also 33. 33 is our magic number. 3 and 3 is 9. 3 and 3 is 6. So 33 is our magic, one of our magic numbers, our special numbers to the society, so that's why Oceana is chose. Oceana is also 19, which is chaos. 37 is 21 and 73. And then 37. Thirty-seven is the twelfth prime number, so once again, representation representing a zodiac in some form of completion. So I don't think just that Orwell was just grabbing, grabbing names. You know, they grab names based upon what they're trying to do. Just remember that. That's why they grab certain names. All 
All right, so we got Big Brother, we got Oceana. So the main character in um, 1984 is a gentleman called Winston. Winston is the, one of the main, main characters. Winston, of course, is 33. He's 42, so he represents the nick. Got the nigger code, Saturn nigger, 33, 42. All right, so he'll represent number 42, 27 time, keep up time, 101. Maybe he goes into room 101, so Winston is 101. He represents 101. And anytime we talk about 101, especially in school, um, if you go to college, you start off in English 101. It's kind of just re-education. So 101 represents re-education. That's the beginning of your re-education. Coming out of high school to college, you're being re-educated because a college education is nothing like a high school education. 41, remember 41 is 13, the number of change. 113, the chaos code, another code of chaos. Conspiracy is also 113. Let's pull up some of these words and make sure we don't want Actually, conspiracy is 123, 51. 51 is conspiracy, 147. I'm on this other one here, so let's pull up. Toggle. I remember 66 is no more conspiracy. My numbers are chaos. Uh, 1946, 72 is the number of chaos, which is 14, 44, 115. There's some about 113 that. So remember, 113 is 30, the 30th prime number. Okay, 113 is 30, and we'll get more on 30 in a minute. 30 can be just be broken down as 3, which is just one of the magic prime numbers, 3. 3 going into 33. 3 and 3 is 9. And there's a lot of research you can do on 33. So that's why that name was picked. Winston, then with Jameis Winston, famous Jameis the nigger, Negro code slapped on him 42. So 42 has a, a lot of deep meanings. All right, so Big Brother has created a uh, party known as, well, we got Democrat Republican, so his party is known as INSOC, which is total totalitarian in nature. So in sock it's six is sixty seven. We've already broken down sixty seven. We'll do it again for those who remember sixty seven can also be thirteen. Thirteen the number of change. In sock is also nineteen. So in sock is all about chaos. And if you watch the movie, you see in sock is all about chaos. In sock is 31, which is 11. 11 is the master number. In sock is 40. So we remember, we remember we're talking about opening CERNs. We're talking about 20 and 40. It's a portal. Portal into another way of living. 31 again. 93 to keep up time. Saturn, 133. We'll break that down. 32, which are Masonic numbers. 37, which is 21. 73, we broke that down already. So those are what, why those specific uh, names have been cho chosen. And if you go deeper into it, you can pull up Eurasia. And in the movie, they're all fighting. If you watch the movie and the see Eurasia's 29. 29 is 10, of course, 52. Prophecy, 74 is 47. Foundation. So Eurasia is, the, is always spoke about 
in the in the film is the main place that they're always fighting, but then not fighting. We'll talk about that. And then East Asia, and they're all fighting for Africa. They're all fighting for Western Africa. They're not fighting for South Africa, because South Africa is a part of Oceania. So they're all fighting for West Africa. We know if you've seen the movie, we talk about anything south of the Bantu, south of the Sahara. They're fighting for. So they're all fighting to have control of West Africa, but they can't seem to win. That's the problem. So who are they fighting against? Who where they they can't seem to win that part? And they, they never they never seem to win, but they always talk about they're fighting for this part. Our East Asia is thirty nine, twenty one is our twenty one again, thirty nine, one twenty seven. So we talk a lot about chaos, a lot about Saturn, the keep of time. So a lot of the same numbers and we see the vibration. Inside a lot of this. I feel a lot of good stuff comes out of this film. See how East Asia and your Asia vibrates off of each other 29. It's like it's the same place. Well that's each Asia, my fault. I'm looking for it's double saved it. So I'm looking for your Asia. Put that in. Should have got a spell right, I do. All right, so your age is 47, 29, 38, then on death, 52, prophecy. This is the place that always seemed to be fighting over in the film. One forty seven is nothing. Let me pop one oh one in here. Cause they always talk about room one oh one and room one oh one is the final room. So one oh one will be twenty six the God number. We always talk about that God number. Also could be representative of a twelve. 2 times 6 is 12. 2 plus 6 is 9. So we always talk about that number of completion. It's always the room that's the final place they take you to break you inside of the movie. Got to get you in the room 101 for the final re-education. All right, so those are just some common things. Um, also, the other bet, if you take your razor, you get 74, 29. And you just look for the vibrations inside of that. 38, the number of death. I'm trying to find a vibration where 29 is. So let's use. You see, brainwash is 67. A lot of brainwashing goes on in the film. 41. So that's not the word I want to use. The word I want to use is you know, I always go for a representation. So re-education is 52, re-education is 101. So that's why in the film, let me make sure I spelled it right now. So it's a room of re-education. So that's why 101 is always that number you see kind of connected, 47, 65. But room 101 is the room of re-education. So that's why that's the last place you go because they have to fully indoctrinate you by re-educating you to their um, way of thinking in a way so a lot of good a lot of good stuff in there but if you pay attention and you understood the knowledge that we've been talking about and you've been doing your research it's kind of easy to kind of push you know tear apart some of this stuff that you see so one thing he they do do in the movie is 
they don't give you the numbers. As far as the 1984 in, in, in numbers, they spell it for you. I found that kind of strange. In the book, he just... But I think it's on the title, too, instead of just on there. So let's make sure we get this right. So if you take 1984, you get 220, 103, which can be seen as 13. Number zero does not exist in numerology. 103 is 27. 27 could be 9, 14. 14 is nothing but 41. That's 103. Got a lot of 103. 95, 86, 158, 209, which is 29. That takes us back to our 29. Okay, 103. So 1984. And then our other main antagonist in this, yeah couple of folks in here. So you got Goldstein. Funny they chose the name Goldstein as a person to take on Big Brother. And Goldstein, of course, is 42. He's Winston. He's the nigga. He's trying to take on Big Brother. 66, 46. Sacrifice. Goldstein is the sacrifice. 105. which is 14, takes it back to 41, and then we'll change some other things with 14. And, of course, 131 is 32. It's the number of societies. So Goldstein is the, the rebel. That's the first thing they have is the rebel. He leads, he leads the rebellion. And it kind of tells you how they felt at that time about people in the Jewish community. It was a big slur. So if you talk about being anti-American uh, Jew at the time, you look at the, the 1949 film when this book was wrote and how they had the, the main enemy, the bad guy, being Goldstein. So you kind of saw what was going on around that time. And this is prior to the creation of Israel. All right, so 42, 24 is rebel. So nigga numbers, 30 is rebel. So he represents the rebel. And then we have um, O'Brien. So O'Brien is also a major antagonist. side of the movie. We're going to spell O'Brien two different ways because we don't know how they want to spell O'Brien. All right, so Brian will be 32, 40, the portal, 59, the Negro code, 40, all certain and portal numbers, 29, 103, which is 13, 117. That would be numbers representing O'Brien. Okay, so you get a lot out of the breakdown of 1984. Spelled O'Brien two different ways just in case. Alright, so Brian 36, 54. The top when he's 40, he's uh, 32, 59. Okay, 59. So Julia is the young lady in the film. She is the young lady that Winston falls in love with. She kind of... Um, pursues Winston. So Julia's 53, she's 17, um, 79, 82, 37, 21, and we talked about that. 
73, 20, 65. Those are just some numbers with Julia that kind of that portal. So when he meets her, he already thinks that she's up to something because she's a member of what they call the, the anti-sex league. Basically, kind of the feminists of what the feminists were kind of saw as. They just were against sex and against men and women being together. And basically, you know, they... They're independent. They don't need a man to have, have children. So that's pretty much what the anti-sex league in the movie deals with. You know, they get really, really deep into it. All right, so 53 is 16. We'll break that. Also 15. It could be versus 15. 8. Okay, so these are just some of the numbers from from the film. So 1984 itself is 22, the master building number. You see a lot of references to 21, re-education, we're on 101, 103, which is 13, and there's no zero in numerology. And so in the middle, there's no zero. So 101 is also 11. That's why it's a master number. Okay. So those are just some of the numbers. So you can play with these numbers, look at it, kind of see uh, how these things go together. All right. So in the film itself, Big Brother, and, you know, they talked a lot about this in 2019, is Big Brother watches over everyone. He's on the idiot box. Everyone has an idiot box, but in 1984, you can't turn the idiot box off like we can. So only certain people can turn off the idiot box, and those are people like O'Brien. So these are people in the higher uh, echelon of the party, pretty much. These are, the, these are the, the second tier of the leaders. They're pretty much the leaders of this party. They keep the party rules flowing to the people at the bottom, which is pretty much the poppers they're just the, the sheeple as um at times we like to call the people in this society the sheeple so they keep control of the sheeple but they could turn their tvs off the sheeple can't the sheeple have to list to this propaganda lies and bs all damn day so winston is the hero but he's not really the hero he's kind of the villain of this he's also a villain because winston is in charge of the newspaper. They call it Newspeak, which is just the newspaper. And Winston creates the news. And at times, there are truths that he will turn into lies. So for one, I think one truth was his friend was supposed to win a chess game. Now, I don't even know if he even played the chess game, but he was written in to win the chess game. And that was another thing about this. It's like they already had these stories prior to, you know, them, them being changed or manipulated or they were pre-written. Something would take place and then they would have to change them and make up people. So Winston was kind of making up the news. He was creating people creating stories, changing the narrative. He was just as guilty as Big Brother because he just did everything Big Brother said. So he was the guy who was trying to change the wording of the society to better fit acceptable words that Big Brother was saying. So another um, term that I didn't put up here is a term they call thought crime. So in this society, you couldn't think. The only thing that you can think about was what Big Brother and the party of Insight allowed you to think about. And that was their narratives. So Thought Crime 66, 147. So 66, 78, 177, 173. And we deal with words like um,
I believe prophecy was the word I put in there. Prophecy, we talk about. Like Saturn. We get deep into it. We talk about 66. I think there's some 66 vibration in here. I think that vibrates for 66. All right, so thought crime sixty six. So you couldn't, you couldn't. Uh, we talk about revelations where thinking is a problem. Going to the book of revelations, you're at that point now where thinking is a problem. You can't think on your own in this coronavirus environment. You can't think on think on your own. So man, I'm gonna beat the dead horse with thought crime. So Winston, although he's manipulating the the news, he thinks that is wrong. He he knows that what what he's being t- told is wrong. And that's this constant thought he puts in that his his um diary. So in this society, um freedom is slavery. They say freedom is slavery. So if you're free, you're a slave. You don't want to be free in that society. So they want to control every aspect of people's lives. So from what you eat to giving you liquor every morning and making sure you got liquor every morning. Uh, talking about physical health, but everybody's allowed to smoke cigarettes like chimneys. That's just a part of a part of the society. So the past does not exist. The, the sheep will know nothing about their past or nothing about their history. They don't know nothing about where they live. Only the upper epsilon understand the past and they utilize the past to control the present and then create the future that they want. So those are some of the things that they do inside of our 1984. So Winston uh, wants a a more corrupt world. He wants a world where people can really decide to live how they want to live. But, you know, like I said, he's one of the sheeple who is um, the Pied Piper kind of playing the people in the water every day by changing these narratives. So one minute they're at war with Eurasia, the next they're at war with East Asia, and he's changed the narrative. And he knows they are at war with Eurasia, but he changes this to, oh no, we're at war with uh, uh, East Asia. Eurasia is our ally, and they, they just go back and forth because this war can never stop. Continues Some form of continuous warfare. Kind of at that time in the Cold War, the Cold War went on for a long period of time. It could never stop. It went on for a long period of time. So you're always in some form of continuous warfare. That's what the parties are. Democrat versus Republican, continuous warfare. Black versus white, continuous warfare. We're in a nation of continuous warfare where no one ever seems to win. And that was the whole thing going in 1984. No one was ever seen to win. So Julia comes into play. He doesn't trust Julia because the young people around there are used to kind of... Um, sniff out who might be thinking for themselves. So early on, some little kid sniffs out he might be thinking for himself and, and calls him a thought criminal. Now, how these children know that you're thinking, I don't know, but they have been groomed and raised in these schools to kind of have this sixth sense of when someone is thinking for themselves. Totally, totally crazy. But uh, that's what they use the kids for, for spying. So Julia's an older, she's a teenager, 17. He's an older guy. Cause, um, He's into some freaky stuff, and he sees her, and she comes from nowhere, you know, telling him uh, she loves him and all this other crazy stuff, kind of to get him to react. And I think, from my interpretation, she was planted there by O'Brien, who is our main antagonist, because before, prior to this, he's looking at O'Brien as though he's looking to be accepted by them. He's looking to be a part of the higher, higher echelon. He doesn't want to be a sheeple. And he doesn't feel he's supposed to be a sheep because, you know, um, O'Brien saved him when he was a kid. So O'Brien pretty much raised him up. But, you know, they don't talk about much of that in the movie. You have to read the book for that. But O'Brien kind of raises him up. But uh, he doesn't want to be a sheep. He's looking for them to be looking at him. So they do certain things to get attention. So they use Julia, in my opinion, to get at him. Um 
if you see it from her perspective, she's pretty much turning on this feminine agenda that they have. And here they have another all sorts of alphabet agendas for the society we're in today where um, the heterosexual relationship is kind of being destroyed. It's being destroyed. Family as we know it is being destroyed. And, you know, you can go get a test tube stuck in you and have a baby and, you know, they can create how your child looks. And we're going into this this realm of um, genetics where they're going to pretty much be able to, to like a like a good soup, create the child you want with no defects and then they're going to be perfect and all this other sick crap. And basically destruction of the family. And in 1984, they want to destroy the orgasm. They don't want men and women or people in general to have orgasm because orgasm destroys the mind and you know love pretty much love for anything other than the, the society they in and big brother is a problem because you gotta love big brother because without big brother where would you be and that's where we are today so much dependent dependence on the government that you're willing to do whatever the government says so that's where we are with this coronavirus environment and people like winston so although winston acts like he's a good guy you know, it's people like Winston who change the narratives in the newspaper every five or ten minutes. So one minute, masks were bad. Um, one minute, you didn't need a mask. Next minute, oh, maybe you do need a mask. Then now we had everybody needs a mask. And it, it's just this constant changing of the, the, the narrative where none of it, at the end of the day, is really factual or true. And they use real death to control the narrative and fear. It's all about how afraid you are. And that's the thing in 1984. They just keep the people afraid because people come up disappearing when they start thinking for themselves. The minute you think for, you, think for yourself, you come up disappearing because they can't have that. You can't have a society full of people that are thinking for themselves. And anybody that's thinking for themselves, they turn those individuals into rebels and use that to keep the, the fueling going on where these are the people in society that they're not they're not for you and your success and um, they're not uh, for the positive nature of our society. See, they're against you, so we got to put them out there on the front. You see that a lot going on today with these Twitter things and pulling people off of Twitter. Anybody who thinks for themselves and wants to educate themselves is now seen as a problem. So, of course, Winston and Julia get together and they start a, a love affair but inside of this winston rebels and he rebels too hard in my opinion because he goes from a hidden rebellion to well i just rebel out in the open and he begins to trust people in my opinion that he really should not trust because remember now he's the news guy he's writing the news stories of course they're watching him because he's changing narrative so if he tries to rebel it's going to be a problem but the problem with his rebellion is this. The person, O'Brien, the main major antagonist, is the guy who gives them this book written by Goldstein, the rebel, who's wrote, written the book, and anybody who's part of the rebellion is so-called read this book. So O'Brien gives him this book, um, knowing that he's with Julia. Julia's not really you know, listening to any of the book of Goldstein. She really doesn't care about that. She's just there for the sexual part of so she says, I really don't believe that. I think it was just a way of kind of targeting targeting Winston to see where he really stood. Because remember now, his role is very important. He's changing the narrative and controlling the narrative for Big Brother. So, of course, he reads the book. And, of course, in the books it says that pretty much everything that has been going on in the civil society is bullshit. We know, there's no... no actual wars we're just fighting just to be fighting to keep the sheeple afraid so we can keep control of the sheeple and he reads that and like he already knows this it's not like he doesn't know it because he's already stated it i think it's a bunch of bullshit i think the rebellion uh even the rebellion to a point is bullshit i don't think those people are doing all this stuff they say they're doing he knows they're not because he's been writing these stories so what takes place is of course he gets caught with Julia. These are crimes because you're not supposed to be having sex like that and no orgasm. So that's the crime. And then reading the book is the crime. So uh, he makes a statement that, you know, we're, we're the dead. The other people who are in the rebellion are actually living because they they're woke. They're part of woke society. We still sleep as a sheeple. 
of course, that's when they grab him. So now they have to re-educate him. And his re-education is we got to kill off the last remaining uh, thoughts that you have of, 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 of freedom. Pretty much kill off freedom, kill off love, kill off um, individuality. You have to be a part of this collective mind where Simon Says, do it and you do it. And that's how we live today. We live in a Simon Says society where anything that's challenged is the problem and then we turn on each other like rats. And you see a lot of emphasis of rats in, in 1984, the old rats in the barrel. Every five, ten minutes you see rats because rats, you know, symbolize, you know, that just the lower form of pretty much society. People just telling on each other, the rats pulling each other down devouring each other if they got to to survive and that's pretty much where we are in this society anytime somebody speaks up here comes another rat to pull you down anytime you challenge what's going on here comes a rat to grab you you can't say anything outside of what they want you to say even on social media and twitter and youtube they don't want you to really tell no truths. They allow you to tell them. And the minute that you tell too many truths, those rats pull you down in the barrel because they don't want you to think outside of what they feel you should be thinking about. So don't think that you know we're free to just say what we want to say on YouTube because YouTube is not going to do that because they're controlled. They have to keep their sheep of control. Oh, no, you can't speak about that or you can't say this or you can't say... Oh, they're thinking too hard for themselves. So in our society, they might open a window where it looks like it's free thought, but it's really not. They're still controlling it. That's 1984. The rebellion really wasn't a rebellion. They controlled even the rebellion. The guy O'Brien had wrote the book. He wrote Goldstein book. They created Goldstein because you need good and evil for a society to stay together. You got to create an evil to fight. So you can sell your interpretation of good. And that's all they do in these societies. So Democrats and Republicans are created because they got to keep you fighting. You know, all these countries go to war with each other because they got to be in perpetual warfare all the time to keep the sheeple in control and keep the sheeple afraid of everybody else so they can keep control. So when the mob guys always say it's better be feared than love, that's what they mean. Fear is more powerful than love in a way. And that's how they crack Winston. Um, they put him in a situation where death, he's not afraid of, but he wants it to be quick. And we all want it to be quick. We don't want to know how our demise is going to come. And if you, anytime you see a movie where a guy you know, pulls a gun on a guy and he, oh, God, no, he goes to panicking. It's the worst way of dying is knowing how your demise is going to come. That's how they crack Winston because he's supposed to be so much in love with Julia, but they wanted to be in love with Big Brother be in love with their society, be in love with lying to the sheeple, and be in love with the party because everything has to be about the government first. Love is out the window. You're supposed to only love the government and that's it. So they got to crack him to get him to, you know, only be in love with the government where it's the most important thing, and they do that by finding his weakness, and that's room 101. They use your weakness against you. And... They plot, they pretty much bank that you're so much afraid of your weakness that you'll do whatever they say. You'll crack. You'll be big brother for your life. And that's how they get at us. They always try to use something against us so strong that they can crack us. That's why if you watch the, the um, usual suspects, you have to like the character of Kaiser Sosa because the first thing they tried to grab to crack Kaiser Sosa was his family. And what Kaiser Sosa did was he eliminated that from, from his psyche. He killed his own family. So he showed that, you know, yes, my family is my weakness, but I can't allow it to be my weakness. I got to destroy it. Because if I destroy it, then I'm seen as a man who does not have a weakness. And even that, I can overcome that, but I have to destroy my weakness. Or I have to just, you know, tell you that, go fuck yourself, and, you know, it is what it is. And Winston couldn't do that. His weakness was more powerful because his weakness reminded him of the past and, and things he did to his, his mom in the past and his sister in the past. And that's the part where that destroyed him, not being able to deal with the past. 
not being able to deal with the past to live in the present then going with the future and the past overcame it so that's why we always say don't get caught up in your past sometimes your past will destroy you and you won't be able to live you got to be able to overcome your past even if it means even if it costs you your life even if it costs your life because at the end of the day what's more important true freedom or being a slave and true freedom sometimes comes in the form of death True freedom is, you know, fuck this. Why do I even want to be here? If that's what you got to do to me, man, just do it. Because that's what people bank on, that you give in and tap out. And you're never going to fight because you're so afraid to die. And sometimes you just have to die. You have to, you have to prepare yourself that this is what the creator wanted for me. And this might be the time. And I control the decision. And that was that play on freedom that where you, you had the freedom right now to decide if this is this is what you want your end to be. And we can we can possibly do it or not do it. But if you want to die like this, it's going to be a brutal death. And, you know, they'll build it up. But you have to make that decision at that point that the old saying freedom or death, freedom or death. And freedom is the ultimate sometimes to be really free. You might have to die. Just to get away from everything, just to get away from that. Just, you had that, let me just go ahead with it. But that's how they, they cracked him. And at the end, you can't really tell if he still loved Julia, didn't he? Makes a statement. Or if he loved Big Brother, the way that the movie ended. So, 1984, very deep movie, but I say read the book. I think the book will be more in detail because it kind of had more breakdown of what happened in their society. But in our society, the same thing happened. We got caught up in perpetual warfare. Um, Soviet Union did fall that part of the Cold War, and the Cold War is never end. We just went into a new Cold War. Now we're in a Cold War with China. Uh, Big brothers watching everything we do, be it through our phones, TVs, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. Uh, they sell our information. That's why the damn telemarketers call you every five or ten minutes. School is still a re-education process where they wrote the history. So they've been controlling that negative, that, that narrative for, for civilizations and decades. And if you speak past that narrative, is a problem. So this is the society that we live in. And he was kind of writing on that society as we get deeper into it. Um, Simon says always, Simon says there's a virus out there. Simon says people are dying for the virus. They need to do A, B, and C. Simon says we're the only people who can get rid of the virus with no solution whatsoever instead of a vaccine when you can work on your immune system and be all right. But this is what it is. And they keep changing the news narrative, just like in 1984, a constant changing of the news narrative to fit whatever they want. So, oh, uh, people went to the beach. The next day, all the people were, were positive, and the sheep will go along with it because they too stupid to say, hold up, if the people was at the beach on Saturday, Sunday, all these people were tested, and they were positive that next day. But that's the problem. The sheep in 1984 didn't challenge anything. They were just idiots. They just went with the flow of the information. They never stopped because if they thought that was a crime, and they were so afraid of that part that they wouldn't stand up for themselves. And that's where you don't want to get us a society where you're so afraid to stand up for yourself that you just go along with the flow. But that's what we're doing right now. We just go along with the flow. We don't challenge anything that we do, we do or say. Uh, anything that we hear, we don't go redo research. And this is where we are. And the minute that you do challenge it, you're the bad guy. You're pointed at, oh, we'll destroy this. We'll kill your family. You know, they use these threats to keep the sheep are in control because they constantly control the narrative. And I'm going to say this, even with the, some of these religious communities, how long do they think that they're going to be in power if Big Brother's been writing the narrative the whole time? Remember, at one point, the Germans was over the, the, over the situation. So you got to remember, don't think that they're on your side. They're continuously writing the agenda. They, and they can change the agenda at any time. Remember now, Black Lives Matter again. And the, before they couldn't even care about, they didn't even care about black people. Then before that, it was slavery. So you know they con constantly write this agenda. Oh, black people are important. That's the the new agenda, the new narrative. So when that narrative comes, they can kill off whatever other narrative they want to. So that's kind of that that the whole thing. Big brothers watching. Big brothers watching. Big brothers controlling the narrative. 
He's always changing. He's creating these factions to, to keep us in perpetual war with each other. And that's what we talk about all the time. This perpetual war created by the elite. And the elite are the, the big brothers of our society who just keep creating things and we just keep falling into their trap. So, good book to read. Orson Welles, Orwell, of course, part of society before we get out of here. Don't think he wasn't, so. And if you take Orwell, I think I spelled it properly, you get 31, 111 time. It's 31 and 11 times. The 11th, uh, the, uh, the, the master number. So, you know, we know what Orwell was, a base to it. But he, you know, he wrote this book saying pretty much where society was going and pretty much that's where we are. Big Brother's watching, of course, and uh, they, could, they continue to change and write the narrative every day. And you have the ability to turn it off, but we don't. We just keep it going. You know, I saw this on the news, and I saw that on the news. Why, why Winston, with his news speak, and before we go, I'll throw that in there. Because the news speaks, and we believe it. So when you see the headlines, and that's why I read the headlines, News Peak 3140, the portal 49, Revelation 4113. So every five or ten minutes, Winston's changing the story for for his masters and handlers. But, oh, you know, the world is corrupt. The world is corrupt enough. Winston wants a corrupt world. He's living in a corrupt world. He just doesn't see how corrupt his world actually is. Mr. Mockty, Back Row Ministry, check it out. Read it. You know, do your own breakdown. Uh, watch the film where you can get a little bit out, but not a lot. Uh, probably the book, you get a little bit more out. Mr. Mikey, Back Row Ministry, Peace and Have Grace.